This didn't go as planned, so I'm gonna abort this. I just unboxed this Upez, Opez, Oops, however you pronounce that, I'm not sure. It's a 2,232 watt hour power station. It does come with a solar charging cable, so we're gonna get that hooked up and we're gonna go charge it. So it's hooked up and we're at 114, 127, 132. Let's let it go ahead and get to where it wants to rest. I will say immediately the fan came on inside to make sure it doesn't overheat or anything. You were getting about 260 watts, 261. I might be able to move the panel just a hair more, but we'll go ahead and let this charge. It's gonna take about two hours, it says. It may take a little bit longer because the sun is, you know, on its downward descent, but we're getting like 260 right now. Not too bad. So let me top this off. When it's topped off, we'll get it inside. We'll start testing it. Again, this is the OPS, OUPES, O-U-P-E-S, I'm not really sure. This is a 2,232 watt hour uh, lithium iron phosphate. Obviously they rate it to about 3,500 cycles, give or take, and it'll still retain 80% of its effective capacity. It does have 13 total outputs. It has four NEMA, 520R AC. It has your 12 volt uh, cigarette plug. It has two 12 volt 10 amp barrel jack connectors. Then you have four USB uh, quick charge 3.0 USB A. You have a power delivery and a power delivery and 140 watt USB C. Now you can charge this AC up to about 1400 watts. So you can charge it relatively quick. It'll do solar input of 800 watts. It has a 13 amp max on that. It'll do 16 to 70 volts on the MPPT. And you can do up to 2200 watts with AC and solar combined. And then the car input is uh, 12 to 15 and a half volts at eight and a half amps. So just basically whatever your car's outputting. It does come with, you know, cigarette plug there that goes in through power pole. And then your solar also is gonna do power pull and it's got the MC4 connector. Then it has the normal AC power cord. Obviously, what could you use this one for since it is pretty big battery? This would be great for keeping a fridge, uh, Wi-Fi lights on, stuff like that during an emergency. Um, you could run a fridge and freezer off this for quite a while. I'm gonna do something interesting with it. Like I told you, I'm gonna do the Starlink, but back here behind it, I have a Vibrofrost. It's like a slushy machine. I like to make Frosties with it. We're gonna try something that I haven't tried before. And I've always had my wife to help me, but we'll see how that turns out. I just wanna see how long it'll run this. I actually don't know what the wattage draw of that Vibrofrost is. That Vibrofrost has, you know, like a refrigeration unit because it chills the cylinder. and That's what makes your icy. So I'm just curious to test it out on that because, you know, I could show you, oh, I can run my lights for this long, but let's do something fun, right? And we'll hook it up to the uh, Starlink Mini for a minute just to kind of see ballpark how long it would last. We'll actually do that first. It does have an adjustable AC charging, so you can do 700 watts or you can do 1400 watts. Obviously, the slower you charge it to a point, the better it is for the uh, life of the battery cells. So that's always nice. If you're in a hurry, you can charge it quick. If not, go ahead and let it go to charge a little slower. Realistically, you're gonna have about 85% of this battery capacity usable because you are gonna lose some to the inefficiency of the inverter. That's physics, there's nothing you can do about that. So realistically, like a fridge averaging about 150 watts, you're looking at about 12 hours, 12.6 hours. And then you could run a space heater on it for maybe an hour, hour and a half. Um, not the best use for these, but if you really needed to, you could do it. So the charging time expectations, you're looking at about 1.6 hours probably to full from empty. Their page says one and a half hours, but you are gonna lose a little bit of efficiency for like the display and the internet of things and stuff. So one and a half, 1 1.6 hours is, is probably realistic just off of the 1400 watt AC. If you did it with solar, you're looking at about 2.8 hour, hours if you were getting the full 800 watts that you could get input. So adjust that math accordingly. Then AC and solar, you could probably get to about 80% in like 45, 48, 50 minutes, somewhere in there. Now with a car, you're probably looking at like 100, maybe 130 watts of output. Yeah, it's gonna take a long time. If you're driving through the night and need to charge it up for the next day, yeah, maybe. This is about 45.2 pounds. The handles make it pretty nice. It is starting to get a little bit on the heavy side, but you have to have that for that capacity. There's nothing you can do about it. And again, this is lithium iron phosphate, so you're probably gonna get about 3,500 cycles at about 80% capacity before you start to have issues. Um, the operating temperature of this is about 32 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Should work fine here, because that's about the range we have here in the high desert where I'm at. You can do pass-through charging. Since you can't do pass-through charging, you can also use it as a UPS. 
but it's going to be like 20 milliseconds. It might not be the best solution for some things. And that's kind of one of my complaints. It'd be nice if it was closer to 10, but it's like 20. So some things are going to work okay with that. Other things might not work so well. You'll just have to test that with your devices if you intend to use this as UPS. My only other complaint, um, and this isn't something that applies to me, it's just I notice this a lot in comments from my subscribers, is that this has no RVTT30 outlet. You're going to need an adapter if you want to feed like a small RV panel off of this. That's not going to apply to most people. But that is a common uh, complaint I see about power stations in my comments. We have the Starlink Mini set up there. Cable runs in here. We come around and we go right up into it. I'm just gonna push the door shut just a little to not let all my heat out. Sorry for the tour of my kitchen there. Let me turn it on. There we go. And then I'll go ahead and show you the app real quick. Now this does use the Clenergy, Cleanergy app. So we'll go ahead and push the Internet of Things button. We got the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi flashing there. If I can get you a little bit better angle. Actually see the display. There we go. So you can see the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi is on. Cleanergy immediately saw it because I've already set it up and it'll do everything here. So it shows, you know, how much is left at standby right now. It's doing nothing from solar, nothing from the grid. You can turn the DC on here. You can turn the DC for the uh, USB on here and you can turn the AC on. We're gonna turn the AC on and we'll let the Starlink start connecting and doing all of its stuff. There we are, it's spooling up. While that's going on, I will get my MacBook Pro out here. This is an M1. We're about 38, let's see what that takes us to. So we jumped up to about 52. This battery's pretty much full. We'll go to my YouTube, I guess. While that's working, we'll show you the app again. So now it's giving us an estimate, if we'd focus. About 20 hours, 58 minutes at the current draw. About 22, 25 DC and about 30-ish, 20 to 30 AC. That Starlink's still coming up. All right, we're back now. Starlink Mini is downloading an update. Pulling a little wattage just from that. But we'll get this video going. Starlink Mini's running fine. And with the Mini going and the laptop charging and everything, we're looking at 20, 22 hours for this. I'm gonna go ahead and mute this. Say I just needed to do some YouTube and maybe write it and stuff. I've got 20 hours with the Starlink Mini going maybe more because it is pulling an update right now, which is gonna be using you know, some power because it's extra bandwidth, but pretty cool. But let's get to the thing that I really wanna check out and let's get this thing hooked up to the Vibrofrost. So I like to make like a frosty-like drink out of this just with some chocolate milk. Uh, we're gonna use this protein, uh, Premier Protein. I will have to add a little sugar. Yeah, I'm gonna just dump these in there. The mini's finishing up, then we'll plug this in and get it running and just see kind of how long this thing's gonna run. Okay, so I added just a splash of milk in here because it was kind of thick. And we'll go ahead and get this plugged in, turn this on, and we're gonna set to milkshake. And we want it nice and thick. And we'll go ahead and start it. So look, we're drawing, you know, about a thousand peak, and now it's gonna hang out at about 200. It's been a few minutes, we're still chugging along right around 200, give or take 20 watts. So that's actually, I, I expected this thing to use a lot more energy. Uh, not, not exactly the stress test that I was hoping for. That, that's actually surprisingly efficient, that little chiller. But I guess you're only chilling that small surface of that metal. And then this is creating, you know, like frozen pieces of the metal, scraping them off and recycling new content. So I guess it makes sense. It's not like it's trying to cool a large cavity or something. It's literally just cooling that stainless steel. So pretty cool. We'll be back when it's done and see what percentage we're at. This didn't go as planned. This is actually too thick. So it's making the whole thing like do things that it normally doesn't. So I'm gonna abort this before like this detaches or breaks and shoots protein shake everywhere. It is starting to freeze and clump it though. But yeah, see, it even kind of detects something's up and it's slowed down the chilling process. But you can see that this thing works great. Again, this is a 2,232 watt hour uh, battery in there. I'm quite happy with it. Uh, it did handle the solar charging pretty well. It handled everything else pretty well. Yeah, now that has stopped because it got too clumpy. You kind of get it. That's, that's it. It's a good power station. 
I will have a link to this in the description and sticky comment. I just say one more time that remember it doesn't have an RV port, so you'll need an adapter if you want to do that. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.